to just recite the portion of the Dhamma Chakka Pavattana Sutta <coughs> that is uh, recorded in the Triptaka as a Buddha's uh, teaching. I think you, although we recited in few minutes, it took number of days for the Buddha to utter this sutta to five ascetics. In commentary it is said, one of the ascetic went for begging arms and others were discussing about it. And it took number of days and at the end only one could just see a glimpse of the Nirvana that the Buddha attained three months previous to this recitation. But our chanting it is a blessing on us because I assume the deities because in the Sutta itself all deities heard it up to the uttermost, akanitya from all levels of deities heard it. And in commentaries, it is said after hearing the Mahamangala Sutta, one billion deities got enlightened. One billion, given uh, as Telalak in Singhari, Koti Laksa. Laksa Koti. And it has been calculated as one billion. And commentaries say the number of uh, deities who got enlightened in the previous uh, steps, so on, Sakadagami, Anagami, without becoming Arahants, were beyond calculation, innumerable. And we have to accept these facts, although we don't know, although we can't understand. This are carried out for thousands of years and by saints, arahants, books. And we can't assume that they have lied us and they have no truth in it. And even now, spiritually is fine that there are a lot of unseen beings in this country, Catholic, they believe a lot of angels. I have read a lot of books on angels. And in our country, people believe there are deities, Bhumata Deva. Even this Mangal, uh, uh, Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta was first heard by the Bhumata Deva and it went up and up to all the heavens and then to all the Brahma Lokas and to the utmost Brahma Loka called Akanita Brahma Loka. In the Mahamangala Sutta, if uh, <coughs> so many deities got enlightened, there must be reason for it why we can't get enlightened by listening to the Mahamangala Sutta. And other important factor is, in the Mahapiri Potha, it has been considered the most important Sutta uh, discourse by the Buddha. That is why it comes the first in the Mahapirita also, the great Paritta. And they believe by reciting it, you get the blessings, unseen blessings, to evade a lot of evil forces around you. And that shows the deities who have heard this when the Buddha was reciting it, and got enlightened or got into other stages of uh, prior to enlightenment, may still be living. Some deities, they live billions and billions of years. And those deities who heard it and got benefited by it would be listening to us. Why? But they got enlightened but by not, but not by listening to the words of the Buddha. Words are necessary for communication. They 
understand or they realize the truth the Buddha was speaking through communion, not from brain to brain. We get words, we get ideas, and we interpret them, giving the meaning. Now, I can give the meaning of these Pali words, but that doesn't mean the actual reality behind the word. But the deities, they live in a mental world. They have a mental body. Manokai, we have a physical body. They have an astral, a mental body. And the mental body are in communion with the Buddha's mental body. In the Mangal Sutta, it goes from the first trance to second trance to third trance, fourth and fifth, and then so on, Sakadamagami, Anagami, Arha. When Buddha speak of first dhyana, he is not speaking of it from his memory. We speak through our memory, using our brain, using our thought process. This uh, very sutta, Dhammachakka Pavattana Sutta that we recited, it says at the end of it, what happened to the Buddha at the Enlightenment? <clears throat> Akupa Cheto Vimutti. Given here at the end. Akupa means unshakable, not changing. Cheto Vimutti. Vimutti means freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from thinking. And that is the greatest bliss that an enlightened experiences. Why don't these enlightened Arahants, noble ones, do not think? We have to think using our knowledge, the memories, to know things because we have a limited memory and we want to know things that we like, we think of things that we like or that we dislike and that we don't know, that we can't understand. Enlightenment means freedom from attachment that likes, freedom from resentment, dislikes, and freedom from ignorance that's called unawareness. Because after enlightenment, uh, enlightened one's mind they don't go to sleep. It is called Jagaryanu Yoga. Jagra means not sleeping, keeping awake. Buddha means awakened one. Once awakened, the mind is fully awakened. Awakened means sensitive. All the sense organs are 100% sens sensitive in the Buddha. That sensitivity got developed throughout the samsara. It is his sensitivity that made him Mahakaruna, Mahakarmiko, the most compassionate he <coughs> Compassion is sensitivity. <coughs> See, in sensitivity means the senses are active, alert, sensation. Our mind has two functions. One is sensation, the other function is thinking. Sensation is natural, indeliberate. Our eyes, they see naturally. Our ears, they hear naturally. Our body feels the touch naturally. They are natural, not deliberate. There is no intention. There is no karma. When you see a beautiful sunlight, you are not creating a karma. Sens sensation is indeliberate. Thinking is deliberate. We deliberately think of things that we like, or things that we dislike, or things that we cannot understand fully. Enlightenment means the mind coming to the level of Vita Ragi, 
वीत दोषी वीत मोहि वीत रागी मीन फ्री फ्रॉम लाइक्स वीत दोषी मीन फ्री फ्रॉम डिसलाइक्स वीत मोहि मीन फ्री फ्रॉम इनसेंसिटिविटी एब्सेंट माइंडेडनेस लाइकिंग एंड डिसलाइकिंग is supposed to be the main cause of our suffering and this is the first sermon buddha revealed to the world how we can overcome suffering to overcome suffering buddha preached this discourse to five ascetics according to their tradition they believed in self mortification torture in the body to attain the bliss that was the tradition that existed in in india that time even now they exist torture in the body and buddha said that is one extreme and with the said he before joining these five ascetics he was engaged in sense indulgence pleasures he was seeking pleasure in indulgence and he said it is another extreme this is how uh the just we recited uh the dhamma chakka pavatana sutra ese pancha vagya dweme bikwe anta pabbadithena nasevi tabba there are two extremes that the recluse that the ascetics pabbadith means those who have renounced the worldly life Now, mind you, we are not recluses. We are not ascetics. We have not renounced the world. We are leading a worldly life. And today, we have to find out how far this discourse can be helpful to us as laymen, leading a worldly life, to make it peaceful. in our life level not to be enlightened not to go to heaven or brahma loka but here and now and that i think mahesh can explain better because he has an expert in psychotherapy <coughs> and he has dealt with so many people suffering from mental disorders and sicknesses and suffering and after this uh, we will meet my to uh, discuss this with you how these uh, teachings can be useful in our day to day life therefore i am just uh, telling you the basic ideas that can be useful to you and to my then this was given first discourse was given to five ascetics who are engaged in self mortification and saying you are in one extreme i also had gone into one extreme and also i went with you to the same extreme of self torture and that is not going to help you and we are not got enlightened i got enlightened by following a middle path he said one extreme kama sukalika ni yoga indulgence in sensual pleasures he no very low gammo gramya village rustic not cultured they just rural potu januko potu januko means podu jana common people common people we all are after sensual pleasures we want to please our senses that is our natural instincts as human beings 
not only we, human beings, all beings. Anario indulgence in the sensual pleasures is anario means not noble, not aria, ignoble. Anatta samhito, very harmful. That we have to understand this way. It is indulgence. Karma, so called Karma Yoga, getting attached with getting. That is getting addicted to that. Many are addicted to certain kind of food, drinks, smoke, sex, and so on. Slandering, talking, going to the pub. There are so many addictions. It is addiction that Buddha say it is bad. Not enjoying the beauty of life, the pleasures of life. Because in the uh, one, one sutta uh, discourse delivered to Anatha Pindika, he asked the Buddha, we are laymen, we are not ascetics, would be able to preach us something that can make our lay life blissful and pleasant. Then see, in your life you have bliss. What is that? Ati sukha. In, that means things that you need, if you have, there is a bliss. We can see, we are not blind. We can hear. We are not deaf. We have an appetite. We are not sick. Whatever we have, and we have nice environment that we can enjoy. And it is not enjoying that is bad. If you are really wise, we have to enjoy every moment. We are fools if we don't enjoy life and weep. Delight is the product of wisdom. But wisdom comes in there. We have to understand that delight, that pleasure, they are all transient. They are samkata. They are conditional. They are changing. They are in a flux. They, they be, be delighted at the moment. Nothing wrong with it. But it's wrong is getting attached. That means that was called karma sukali kan yogo, ali kan yogo. Engage in it. Addicted it, into it. Anatta samhito. Very harmful. That's what Buddha said in Pyavagra, Pyotu, Jayati, Soko. The pleasantness is the cause of our suffering. Because when the pleasant is there, we get attached to it, means we want to continue it without realizing the truth. Whatever pleasant can't last long. Then other is we call Atakila Matan Yoga. Torturing Atam is something. Pilamatan yoga. Giving pain to yourself. In our day to day life, if you overwork, harmful to you. Pleasure, if you overeat, harmful to you. Drink beyond the limit, harmful to you. Sex beyond the limit, harmful. Similarly, even other bad things. If you are earning money for your living, that is good. But if you want more and more money, so that we are a rich person, greedy person, eh? where wealth accumulates, men decay. That's a goal meet in it. They said you will see. Where wealth accumulates, men decay. Too much of property will be very harmful to you because. You are always frightened. You don't have a security. You can't sleep at night. You are frightened of thieves and robbers. Therefore, that's why Buddha said the middle path is the best path even in our day-to-day -day normal life. Then Buddha said, without going to these two extremes, 
indulgence in sensual pleasures and indulgence in giving pain to the body. I think uh, in the next discussion, uh, Maesha as a psychologist will explain to you that it's a mental sickness, torturing the body. Some enjoy torturing their own body. They enjoy their worries. They cry and they enjoy their worries because they want to get the sympathy and attraction from other people. Therefore, torturing oneself is one extreme, and Buddha said, without going to those two extremes, Ubo anto anpagamma. Anta means extremes, anpagamma means not going into the two extremes. Majjima patibata tatagatena abhisambuddha. I got enlightened, understood. Chakku karni, I saw. Jnana karni, the knowledge came to me. Upasamaya. The tranquility came to me, abhiknyaya, the higher uh, powers, mental powers, riddhi powers, abhiknyaya. You got it. Paratyati vidhana, tutupa jnana, abhiknyaya. Sambodaya, I became a Buddha. And this is nibbanaya samvatati. Being in the middle path is conducive to the final the utmost tranquility called Nirvana. And he then, what is important for us here, if we were to uh, discuss further, in this said, I saw what is suffering. Chakkumudapadi. Dukkha. Then I saw what was the cause of suffering. Dukkha Samudhi. Then I saw the cessation of suffering and the magga, the way for the cessation of suffering. What is relevant to us practically and for miles also, practically how we can overcome suffering, we pure suffer. Whether rich or poor, powerful or not, beautiful or ugly, all suffer. Animals, even deities, even brahmas, they have to undergo suffering. One important factor with regard to enlightened ones, Buddha reveals in two suttas of Agnutta Nikai that is called Patama Loka Dhamma Sutta and Dutiya Loka Dhamma Sutta. The eleventh stanza in the Mangal Sutta says, Puttasya Loka Dhammi Chittam Yasana Kampati Asokam Virajam Kemam Etam Mangala Muttamam That is the Sopadi Sesa Nibbana After enlightenment, until the final pass, until the Anupadi Sesa Nibbana Those things uh, Mahilal can explain very well. Those are technical terms and things that say we have the experience of doing it. Puttasya Loka Dhammi, when we are in contact with Loka Dhamma, the natural events. What are the natural events the Loka Dhamma Buddha refer to? Eight Loka Dhammas. Labo Alabo. Gain and loss. I also associate poverty and prosperity. Ninda Pasansa. Praise and blame. Blame, Ninda Pasansa, praise. Sukha Dukkha. Pain and pleasure. Those are natural. What happens to the those who are enlightened, their mind is not perturbed or disturbed by those vicissitudes of life. Why? In this, these two, two sutras, 
Pertama, Loka Dhamma Sutta and Dutya Loka Dhamma Sutta, Buddha explained why they are not perturbed by that. Because they have realized the reality of life. What is the reality relevant to this vicissitude of life? They are Anicca, Dukkha, Viparanama, Dhamma. Anicca means impermanent. You may gain some pleasure, some profit. That is not going to last forever. They are transient. They are temporary. You may have a loss. But that is also temporary. Somebody may blame you. That is temporary. Somebody may praise you. Temporary. The same person may blame you again. Your own friends can become your own enemies. Not only friends, your own relatives, brothers and sisters. Sometimes even parents can become your enemies. We are living in a changing world, in a dynamic world. Dynamic means world is active, creative. There is no creator according to Buddha's vision, but there is constant creativity. There is no God, but there is godliness. That's what Buddha realized. Nowhere. We don't know the address of the God. We don't know whether he created this entire universe or not. No, it's not believed by the modern scientists and intelligent people. But that is a personification of the universal power. And scientists say it is universal energy. Energy according to Buddha is not a thing, there is nothing permanent. It is dynamism. Dynamic. If everything is creative and dynamic and active, nothing can remain in the same position, keeping the same identity. That means nothing can retain a permanent identity. Energy is creative and dynamic, and because of that, there is a transformation of energy. Energy gets transformed constantly. And if everything can live in this universe get transformed constantly, Nothing can retain a permanent identity, and that is called anicca, dukkha, anatmata. Those are basic realities of the universe. <coughs> that is what the short in those two suttas, Loka Dhamma. This is the nature of the world. If you realize it, <coughs> you are not going to get hurt or disturbed or perturbed by those changes because they are temporary. And to come to that state of mind, for the first time, Buddha revealed the path he tread. Although we call it path, there is no path. Magga is not the path. Magga is used for path. And Marga is Magga is also Magga means the way of doing it. There's a way, technique, there's a process of is taking place. And that is being neutral. Being neutral means that is called Upeka in the Pali term equanimity between attachment and resentment, between greed and hatred. We have to be wisely in that middle point, middle position, because we are living in a dualistic world. In this world, there is pain and there is the opposite of it, the pleasure. There is gain, labor, the opposite of it is there, loss. And I think Mahathir explained it. 
always our mind is in conflict because we are divided between two extremes one opposite the other that is what happened to hamlet in the shakespeare's play called hamlet to be or not to be that is the question the conflict of the mind the mind is divided one part say be another part say die ultimately prince hamlet had to die in a sword fight his question was he couldn't face the world but he couldn't run away from the world dilemma then we are living in a dwandhatmaka dualistic world dwaita nirvana is advaita it is free from happiness and unhappiness it is free from pleasure and p free from pleasure and pain even while an enlightened man is living in a physical body the body naturally it is natural product it is a product of your own karma past karma our body physical body that's why the buddha had a headache recurring on and on throughout his life he said this because of my previous karma he had a back ache back ache due to previous karma he explained recurring over and over again when the pain comes you know it comes it is a conditional state of the body it can't last long and it says dukkha anatta i am not painful the body is painful because enlightened ones do not identify themselves with their physical body we identify that is our nature that is why we suffer when mahamogalana where the supermost magical powers is the powers thrice tucks well in to kill him then last moment he was looking into his past why these people are coming after me so often again and again oh i had a karma i had killed my own parents in such and such a previous life and i had to undergo and he remained silent and they battered him with clubs and pounded his bones into dust but he had no pain the body was painful he was not identify himself with that but mind you this is only an ideal we had to be careful about our own body without going to extremes over eating over sleeping over resting doing anything in the extreme way according to the sutta is harmful and going beyond this he said we had understand first samadhi in the samadhi sutta reverend the chief uh, disciple of the buddha uh, sariputta he said what is samadhi to see what is right and what is wrong that means what is wholesome and what is unwholesome that means what is proper what is kusal and what is akusal not only knowing when the akusal the unwholesome mind 
or when the pustala holds some mind, crops up. But to see the root of it, cause of it. Pustala mula, apustala mula, loba dosa moha. That is samaditi. In the Buddhist teaching, we are not asked to do anything. We are just asked, we are asked by the Buddha to see things, to be aware. Why? We all have an instinctive wisdom in us, an instinctive wisdom, inborn. What is that capacity? We all are enlightened within us, at the very base of our mind. They are like the Nibbana, that Nibbana is eternal. We are not going to realize the supreme bliss of Nibbana outside us. <coughs> it is within us. But why can't we experience it? We can't experience it because for billions and billions of so many lives, we have mental defilement gathered and accumulated. One or the other. Heap and heaps. And they are hidden behind that. We don't know how long it will take for us to remove those defilements. The only advice the Buddha gave for 20 years after enlightenment was to cleanse in the mind Satitta Pariyo Dapanam Etam Buddhana Sasana. Buddhana means not my. All Buddhas advise their disciples to cleanse their mind. Cleanse from what? Cleanse from defilement. And Buddha said this has to be done Thoka Thokam Kani Kani, little by little, from moment to moment. We should not be in a hurry. That is why it's mentioned at the very beginning that we are not ascetics. We have not renounced the world. We have no need to abstain from enjoy the bliss of life, the beauty of life, the beauty of nature. The, in our life, there are so many things we can be delighted, that we can enjoy. Buddha's advice is not to be indulgent in those enjoyments. Because those pleasures are transient. So are the pains that we undergo. Take them equally. That is called equanimity. It is to be between the two extremes. We have to be in the two extremes, Buddha said. Because the world is transient. Think of an atom. The electron moves so fast. Uncertainty principle. At what moment it can be a particle, in another moment it can be a wave. And no scientist can f find out exactly where the electron is. That is what the scientists see. They are so fast revolving and rotating. So are protons and neutrons, very active. And we are living in an active world. And live in an active world, but live tranquil. How can we? Active means this world is called samsara. Samsara means motion. Atom is in motion. Electrons are in motion. Proton, neutrons are in motion. Our body is in motion. That is what Heraclitus said. No one can step into the same river twice. Even once. But just when we touch it, the river has gone. 
And that is the basic, basic scientific reality that we know as an idea, as a theory. But as a practice, can we? We can't. Because we normally get attached to sensual pleasures. And we want to get rid of all pains. And there is nature and no harm. Even Buddha became sick. Even the Buddha got treatment for his sicknesses. Even other enlightened one get treatment for enlightenment. Therefore, to be in the middle path, we have to maintain our body nicely, but without being attached to it. Without being attached to it means not expecting any pleasure from anything continuously and forever. For the future. Now, I said, Buddha in this sutta at the end says that uh, what happened to it, akuppa me cheto vimuti, me means to me. Akuppa means unshakable, cheto vimuti, emancipation from thinking. It is thinking that we call attachment. Attachment is the beauty is there and we think it is beautiful. How nice! That is attachment. But can't we face the beauty without getting excited? Without getting emotional. Emotional means motion. Motionless. That's why I refer to the eleventh stanza of Mahamangra Sutra. Puttasa loka dhammehi chitta nyasa nakampati. No vibrations in the enlightened mind. What is vibration? Wave formation. It is samsarana, motion. Upward and downward motion. Vertical. The wave goes up, the wave comes down. Vertical movement, up and down. Horizontal movement. The wave goes up, comes down and goes again, and it goes on horizontally. So is our mind. When we see something beautiful, I think uh, uh, my love me remember young days, when you see a young nice girl, eh, you get a melted dream. Huh? How nice if I can get married to her. Huh? And you make it the mental picture, now we are married and living together with that girl. Dreaming. Daydreaming. When you see a nice car, I want to buy a, like, a car like that, and in the future I'm going to collect some money or get a loan, and now we are mentally forming an image that we are in that particular car or in that house, or married that girl. That means the mind, when experience something in the present, goes into the unborn future. That is samsara. And that samsara, that motion, that is mental time, psychological time, moving in the psychological time. When you see somebody who has hurt us, then the memories of the past comes in. Always we interpret the present with past experiences and future expectation. Then what happens? They are the ignorance. Ignorance of what? Ignorance of the present moment. The sunlight is there. The moonlight is there, sitting in the sun or rising in the sun, create a beautiful scenery, it goes away, it vanishes. What harm enjoying it at the very moment without expecting it to continue even tomorrow or day after tomorrow? 
Today there may be bright sunlight, tomorrow there may be darkness. The sky may be gloomy. We don't know. In this Sutta Buddha said, Dukkha, Chintitampi Vinasati, Achintitampi Bhavisati. What you think, Chintitampi, may not happen. Achintitampi Bhavisati. What you didn't think may happen. It is that attitude, the enlightened one and those who are on the path to enlightenment. In the enlightened Buddha, they go arms round in the morning. <coughs> With their begin bowel, they stand before a house. And they don't expect anything from the house. And they don't hate these uh, dwellers in the house just because they don't give you anything. Wait there. If I get it, good. If I don't get it, I'll go. Not expecting anything. Free from expectation. Free from resentment also. Expect within attachment. They too have the physical needs. And they have supplied the physical needs. They have to take a bath. Then Gilampasa. Medicine. They also need Gilampasa. Medicinal drinks to maintain their health. Therefore, I think uh, mice can be very helpful to uh, explain the basic uh, elements in this Dhammachak Pautan Sutra in terms of the modern psychology and modern life, the stress of so many clients of him suffering from so many uh, mental problems. And these four noble truths are revealed for the first time in the Sutta. I had to explain to you the very words used by the Buddha regarding the four noble truths. Uh, with regard to uh, Dukkha Arya Satcha, uh, Buddha said, uh, Dukkha Arya Satcha, Tanko Panidam, Dukkha Arya Satcha, Parit Nyayanti. We term Dukkha as suffering, that is only one aspect of the Dukkha. Dukkha, the verbal meaning is dynamism. Transformation, changing. Do means in the bad way. Ka means just degenerating. Every generation is subject to degeneration. <coughs> when you throw a stone up, it goes up and, and then it comes down. Even the Big Bang Theory, the, its entire universe, the scientists say, It was in a small point of a point of a needle, like a small mustard seed. The entire universe crunched into that state in a black hole. It is that small tiny dot that got exploded by a big bang and still the scientists say the universe is expanding. Thousands and thousands of miles per hour. I think it's in 1929, Edward uh, Hubble discovered it through a telescope. And uh, Hawking said, this expansion will stop one day. Anitya. And it will revert back to the same black hole. Big crunch through gravity. Expansion and contraction. If this entire universe is so impermanent, can there be anything permanent in our life? Impermanency. But not to be get discussed that 
That is foolhardiness, foolishness. The life is there to enjoy. When Anatta Pindika asked the Buddha, tell us something that we can use to make our life useful, Ati Sukha. Enjoy what we have, the bliss. Enjoy means Boga Sukha. Not like my, we have a lot of money and we are not using it. I have seen in number of houses in Sri Lanka, they have very nice furniture, city, all covered with clothes. <laughs> Nobody sit <seen> there. <laughs> ah, just for the show. Ah, and uh, so many cattle leaves and a uh, lot of uh, things for ceramic <coughs> uh, 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 things. What about the kitchen? Yeah. Oh, yes. But we've got two kitchens. Two kitchens. One for, wow, show. for sure. Yeah. Show. Yeah. Another yeah. one yeah. for the yeah. servers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Therefore, to make our life blissful, we must have what we want. We have to earn what we want. To have Atisuka means if you are poor, we can enjoy life. Earn. And Atvin was a multimillionaire, he was a banker. I saw the underground rooms in which he stored up gold. Bigger than this room. Number of rooms. Full. He took card loads of those gold coins to spread in the Deatonara. So rich. That means earn. He never asked Anathmintika, don't earn. Be a recluse, be an ascetic. No. He encouraged it. <coughs> Earning is good because not to be a burden to you and burden to others. You, because we have a high responsibility to look after yourself. That is not out of greed or desire. You are doing your duty naturally. Even enlightened ones, they go arms round when, when they are hungry, they have to feed themselves. That is not a bad karma. Now, Savitri had a big problem. In her office, she is work very, working very hard, doing what she could do and we had been doing it for a number of years. And she wanted to find out whether I am creating a bad karma or good karma by this. <laughs> you create a karma if you go to one of the extremes. When you do it, you are not doing it. It is happening. When you learn driving, it happens. I <laughs> <laughs> blaming the manager. <laughs> right. But it may be a good karma. He may she may be doing it with a good heart. Huh? Oh, she may love the manager, not only you. You have to know. Well, and also she's setting standards for the others to follow, isn't it? No, no, that means blaming uh, the manager when when he goes wrong. What's the good? Okay. Uh, some, somebody asked, I can remember one. Eh? Yeah. Oh, King, I think, asked. Do you speak harsh words? Eh? Uh, in your speech, do you call other people? Eh? Do you threat them? Oh, yes, I do. Not karma. With a good dad, then, do you? Now, your child, it's, he swallows something and it got stuck in the throat. What are you going to do? I hold him while he's crying, I put my finger into it eh, and take that thing out. You are giving pain to that. No, but with a good heart. With a good heart. No karma. What happened to Angulimala? He killed over thousands and thousands of innocent human beings. But he got enlightened. What was the mere motive? He wants to satisfy his teacher according to Manuniti. That is the Indian tradition. 
if the teacher asks you to do something, even now they say, if my guru asks me not to marry, I am not going to marry. If he asks me to cut off my organ, I am going to cut off you. That is the Indian system. And he became a tool of the instigation of the teacher. He was not killing out of hatred, nor with any grief. His action was aloba and adosa. I don't think he created bad karma that way, in that sense. No, but this is thing that we had to argue, but with argue we can't come at the uh, truth of it. If he had done so much of bad karma, he couldn't have got enlightened. <coughs> when Adasatta came and listened to the Buddha, Samanja Palasutta, after the king went away, Buddha told his disciples, is recorded in the Samanjapal Sutta. If he had not killed his father, he would have got enlightened today. So tapan. He couldn't, because that is bad karma. Therefore, Savitri asked whether there is chetana motivation. In your day-to-day -day work in the office, there can't be a motivation, positive or negative. You are not expecting anything special from your good work. And you don't hate your good work. There is no lower chetana in it. No chetana. There is no desa chetana in it. And there is no moha. You know what you are doing. There is amoha. You are not ignorant. And you are doing a duty. And you are not doing it also. It is wrong to say Savitri was doing it. It is happening in you. It happens. I will come to that uh, when I come to the middle part and I am discussing uh, Dukkha Aryam. Uh, Panidai Dukkha Arya Satyam Parijnayanti. Parijnaya means, Parijnaya means wisdom. Parijnana. All round. You have to understand, comprehend your own suffering wisely. With wisdom, not through knowledge. It is the knowledge that you get prejudice. This is good and this is bad. And that's what happened to Savitri. He was in a dilemma. Am I doing a good thing or a bad thing? Because he had been listening to so many monks and this is good karma, this is bad karma, and karma is chetana ambikwe kamma vadami. And she didn't know what this chetana, what my motive was. He was so badly confused. Moha. Parit nyayanti means look at it. Unprejudiced by your knowledge. With a silent mind, look at it. Are you in a wholesome state of mind or unwholesome? Neither. We are just natural, unintentional, automatic. Because of your skill and training. You are training the skill, the brain. It's the brain that is working, not you. South trees only carrying that brain. Do you have the brain inside the head? <laughs> All right. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Oh yes. South tree has a good brain inside the head, and that brain has store of memory regarding her work, and brain is functioning, naturally functioning, unintentionally. When you cook, unintentionally. When you walk, if everything that we do carries a chetana, then we are creating a lot of karma. We can't escape, es escape from this life and from this world. Right. Therefore, understand being 
suffering. Paritnyaya, through wisdom. Wisdom begins where the knowledge ends, where the prejudices end. Look at it directly. Now you get the direct vision of your problem. Huh? You have no intention, no volition. I will do this. No, there, is there will in there? Is there good will or a bad will there? Then what, can, what karma can they be? Then dukkha samudhyam arya satyam pahadabhante. The cause of suffering. Pahadabha, keep away. Don't make use of it. But in the samudhya, tanna, the thirst, the desire. Do you have the desire to do that work? Or the desire to finish it and come home uh, to meet uh, Mahesh? No, no, no desire. No. At that moment, uh, even Mahesh is not there. You are doing the work. Your whole attention, that is a samadhi. In the samadhi, in the first dhyana, second dhyana, third dhyana, they are called loko tarachitta. Loka means mind, thinking. Beyond the process of thinking, the bliss of the first trance or second trance, they are low kotra chitta, they are not product of thought. The product it is the result of non thinking. Kamma has vipaka, but magga has pala, it is not vipaka. You are, now you are in, in the eh? Patabhadhyana, Sotapanna, Magga, Lokotra, Chitta, that is what they uh, 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 Not thinking, because in the first chant itself thinking stops. Only awareness is there. If you think, uh, the first chant they destroy. But while you are doing some work, if you if it comes to your mind that this work is pain, then that is you are not in a very good state. So. This work is pain. Yeah, whatever the work that you are doing, yes. so you think that okay, I'm cleaning. I, I'm using the hypothetical uh, situation. Huh? You make it tired of the work, huh? uh, and uh, you make it some kind of ill feeling towards the work. Sometimes certain problems can't and come, you can't solve it. And then you get excited. Unwholesome elements, mental refinements can come in. You can become fed up with it. Resentment. It, it, it can happen. No, I'm speaking hypo hypothetically. The mind can be in that level. Paha tabba, tanha, what is the tanha? Kama tanha. Bhavatanna, Vibhavatanna. Sit aside. Don't seek pleasure in doing your work. If you seek pleasure, then that is karma tanna, then you are creating a bad karma. Bhavatanna. We have desire to be like that. Bhavatanna. I want to be enlightened. Huh? I want my boss to allow me after doing this nice work. No, <laughs> you don't think it like If you expect any favor from your boss, then there's a desire. No, you are doing your duty. But sometimes when we do good, we don't get the praise but blame. Why is Mahila is laughing because she knows he do a lot of good things, but very often he gets the blame. That is duty, past karma, right? <laughs> Bhavatanna, that means I want to be that. I want to be the favorite of my boss. And then there is Bhavatanna. If you don't have that desire, there is no Bhavatanna. Bhavatanna, oh, sometimes uh, I may be chucked out of this job because now so many things happen now. Employees, redundancies. People are, even, even now I have some, some friends, they are very frightened of their job, no job security now. Mm -hmm. And they always hope 
let my job be saved, let I may not be redundant. That is vibhavatanna. Kama tanna, bhava tanna, vibhavatanna. I don't say that you should not have those ideas. You must have the possibility. Because chintitampi vinasati, achintitampi bhavisati. This is what happened to a Brahmin. He was a farmer. Buddha was going all round on the way, he was talking to the farmer every day. What I do? I am doing I am, I am just cleaning the um, field. They call uh, Purankotanam. Then second time, oh I am doing it for the second time. Deme Kotanam. Then I am just leveling it. Kalagano. Then what I do? I am just uh, sowing uh, Seeds. What are I doing now? I am just uh, cleaning it from the weeds. Like that. Uh. Then he said, now we have become very friends. Every day you are talking to me. When I get the harvest, I will give half to you. He, he promised the Buddha. On the day he reaped the harvest, he put it in the field itself and went home to collect it on the following morning, bringing cart loads. Heavy, heavy rain and flood came and washed away the entire harvest. The Brahmin was very, very sick, about to suffer from a heart attack with the wind. And Brahmin said, I have enough harvest enough grains, enough cereal in my storehouses. I'm not worried about it being washed away by the flood. I'm worried I can't keep to the promise given to you. I'm giving half to you. Then what did the Buddha advise you? When you are doing the first Burang Kotano, first digging, be at that moment. Don't think of the house. We are taking home. Don't put your be in that. When you are digging the first time, be in that. Third time, be in that. When you are sowing, be in that. Live at that moment. Never think of the future harvest that you are taking home. Then, if you are doing your job like that, avoiding pahatabba dukkha samudhi, what is dukkha? Samudhe tanna. Bhava tanna, kama tanna, bhava tanna, vibhava tanna. Then, dukkha nirodha arya satyan satchi katambi. Dukkha nirodha, the supreme bliss free from suffering has to be realized by you. What is important I want to say is, dukkha nirodha gamani patipada arya satyan bhava tabbati. Bhavati is to happen, manifest, occurs. Not to develop. It has to happen. You are going towards, you are travelling towards Nirvana. It's not a thing that you have to do. It's a thing that has to happen because it is conditional. When the conditions are there, huh, it will happen. Now, Savitri is meditating, but uh, she finds difficult to leave Mahesh. But a time will come, not in this life, one day, eh? she will desert to and got enlightened. Or sometimes Mahesh might get enlightened, deserting Savitri before her. We don't know what will happen in the future. Now, this what I am saying is, some think, Middle path, we have to practice. Practice is doing. Doing is karoti. Karoti means to do. But Buddha never used the word karotabha. He said bhavitabha, bhavati. Bhavati is to occur, happen, get manifested. How can it get manifested when the conditions are ripened for it? And 
With that, we'll end our discussion today, saying, don't be in a hurry to be enlightened when the conditions are right. You are sure to be enlightened because the enlightenment is inborn in you. It's not coming from outside. It will come out. It can't remain. Like a volcano getting burst. Like the back call getting big bang, exploded. There can be an explosion here into enlightenment. All light. It was in a black hole. The entire universe is now illuminated. Where was that light? In that darkness. In the diamond, that brilliant light. Where was it? Made out of carbon, out of charcoal, out of coal, out of graphite. Removing that darkness. Therefore, till we are in Moha, we don't know. We are ignorant of the enlightenment within us. When the times come, it will explode. And be patient till then. And that is the only advice Buddha gave for 20 years to this. Kanti Paramang Tapotitika. Patience is the best asceticism. Be patient, but be aware, we all are latent Buddhas. The Nirvana is latent in us. That is what Jesus Christ said to Parsis. Show us the kingdom of God. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. To go to the kingdom of God, he said in the Sermon the Mount, My Father in heaven gives light and rain, both to good people and bad people alike. Be impartial. Don't go to extremes. Take things as they are. Do your job as Saitri is doing without any attachment and resentment without any greed and without any hatred. And she was not doing it. It is happening. It is conditional. Daminta can do that, can't do that job. Even Mahila, he's bald-headed, looks like a very brave, but you can't do that work. That is her training manifesting as a work without any motive. That means without any ill will or good will. No karma. Therefore, let us be natural. That means be godly. We are all made out of the godly power in the universe. The godly nature is in us. Godly means deva. Deva means the control, the display. Deva means, Nara Deva means the person who controls human beings. Deva Dhamma, like Jabaya, those Deva Dhammas control the defilements in us, controlling powers. Hiri or tapa. When you are about to do something, hiri means the mind becomes benumbed. Ottapa means comes back. I want to steal, then you can't. You get sterilized and you jump back. They are called Deva Dhamma. Therefore, Deva Dhamma is the control. It is because of that control that we are attracted this way. Not to gain anything materially, not even spiritually. Even spiritual gain in desire for spiritual gain is, is a desire. Be what you are, accept yourself as you are. 
yata labha santushti what is meditation you are accepting yourself as you are you are being with you but you are not lonely you are alone all in one that means when you are alone in meditation you are godly you are universal that is why in satipatthaya sut ekaya no ayam maggo ekam is one ayana is goi the path nibbana is a path where you yourself and nobody else can take you and nibbana is in you and that is what we discuss uh, ultimately in the dhamma chakka pavatan sutta and these basic uh, ideas contained in the dhamma chakka pavatan sutta uh, my will be able to explain further how far we can make use of the principle according to science and psychology in our day to day life then i think uh, my still starting we starting his discussion